Well, I finished putting that transistor in, the last step being to uh, cut the leads on the other side short so that they don't uh, short out on anything. And I could reassemble this whole thing before testing, but that seems like a lot of work if it doesn't work. So I'm just going to uh, let, it, let all the guts hang out here and power it up without anything connected. There is no heat sinking this way on some of these transistors, but for a light load that won't matter. <clears throat> and then if there's uh, a major problem with it, I don't have to disassemble everything again. So I'm just going to show you one way of doing this. There's a lot of different ways to, uh, to power and test one of these initially before you reassemble it. And I do it differently almost every time, depending on what I happen to have sitting on my table at the moment. But uh, for this one, I'm going to power it with this battery charger. You can't use a standard battery charger, but this is actually a well-regulated power supply and battery charger. It's a 45 amp one, but uh, I don't want to have an uncontrolled short if something is significantly wrong here. So this is what I'm doing. I have the negative side of it connected directly up to the negative post. I should verify that's the negative post before I do that, and it is. <clears throat> and the positive side through this uh, alligator clip through this automotive circuit breaker, 10 amp circuit breaker. So if there is a major problem, this circuit breaker will trip and uh, protect everything. Otherwise it's going through these really thin alligator clips, but for what I'm going to test initially at least, that's not a problem. On the output I have my multimeter set to AC volts, and I also have my uh, light bar connected up. This last light bulb here is 40 watts, the rest are 100 watt bulbs, and uh, I also have my current meter in here so I can see how much current it's drawing. So first of all, I have the uh, power switch off over here, <clears throat> and my uh, power supply is running. It's all hooked up, so I am going to uh, see what happens when I give it power. And nothing. And there's no current draw either. So I'll disconnect it, turn my switch on, and see if it acts like it should. And that's what I would expect it to do, with the uh, input caps charged up, but no battery. So let's try that again. It did spark a little bit that time. I'll actually hook this up. So now I have that 10 amp fuse in there, well, circuit breaker, in case something goes terribly wrong. And uh, we'll see what happens here. Not good. 13.5 volts, we're drawing half an amp, but we're getting uh, 1.4 volts AC out. Oh, my leads weren't in there, good. <clears throat> so with the test leads in, if I can make them stay, I'm getting uh, 120 volts. Anyway, let's uh, put this light, turn this light bulb on and uh, see if it can handle it. And let's take a look at this meter over here when I turn it on. It goes to about uh, 4 or 5 amps, which is what it should do. I'll turn on a 100 watt bulb now. And that seems to work. So the inverter at least kind of works. Now I can't stress test it without any heat sinking, with everything just out here like this. And these alligator clips certainly aren't large enough to handle a large load anyway. So next I'm just going to turn the camera off and uh, reassemble the whole thing. And we'll actually test it to see if it works. Another thing I should mention before reassembling this is that it's a good idea to run it under a light load for a while. Um, just to see if anything here gets hotter than it should. For example, this transistor that I put in here could be mismatched to the rest, making this bank of transistors hotter than this bank or the other banks over here. And if that's the case, then you'll have to fix that problem before you reassemble it. <clears throat> Normally I do that. Uh, this time I'm not going to. I'm not sure why. I'm just choosing not to do it. Uh, once I reassemble it, I'm going to see if there's excess losses um, to see if the efficiency is lower than it should be when I'm running it. And I'll just do it that way. 
Of course, if it is lower than it should be, then I have to disassemble everything to get to this again. So I'm just kind of gambling that it's going to work. One thing to note on that, uh, when you're seeing if these get hot, you can just touch them with your finger with it off, of course, because these are high voltage DC. But uh, like they are high voltage DC, so you can get zapped by these. Certainly if you go like this, because these are at different potentials, it could really zap you bad. Um, so just be careful with that. But uh, in any case, the other thing I want to mention is, remember this thing, no thermal compound on it, <clears throat> no thermal compound on these. I'm not going to forget, I'm going to put thermal compound on, like it should have been from the factory. And another thing to note on this, this is just cheap silicone based thermal compound. Do not buy the uh, special silver compound or any of those other high priced ones. The only reason those are made is because some people don't know any better. This will work just fine. And uh, I'll put a little bit of that <clears throat> on each one of these transistors and uh, reassemble it. And that's about how much you need. Not very much. You're not making a pizza here. I have it all reassembled here with uh, 30 different, 37 different kinds of screws that they use. And uh, one note, make sure that you have this bottom plate on the correct way. Usually it fits either way, but the vents need to go on the opposite side of the fans. Seems obvious, but it's very easy to get on wrong. Seems like if you put it on randomly one way or the other, it's always backward. Anyway, and uh, I'm going to leave off this decorative cover for an obvious reason. We noticed that the transistor's heatsink in a row right here, and if you put this on, it directly covers those up. What genius would design it that way, right? Well, anyway, that is how it's designed, but I want to know how hot these are getting, so if I leave it this way, I can easily tell. Anyway, I'm going to hook it up to this battery to test, and this is where it always gets a little bit unnerving because I'm going to use these very heavy cables to do that. They're about uh, 2 gauge and a battery which is capable of putting out a couple thousand amps if you short it. So this is where it gets uh, a little bit dangerous and really I should have some sort of fuse between the battery and the inverter just in case something goes wrong, especially knowing that one of the fuses in here is defective. But I'm not going to do that. Um, I should have an ANL fuse or something like that. I don't have one so I'm just going to hook it up. And uh, if something goes horribly wrong, I can always cut these cables. It's time to see if this inverter is really repaired. I'm not going to fully test it here. I just want to know if it is fixed or not. And uh, to do that, I have a few different tools. I have this battery connected up through two gauge wires. I have my current clamp. I have a multimeter hooked up. I'm going to put that on its oscilloscope function so we can see the waveform. And I have my uh, kilowatt meter connected up. For loads, I have this light bulb bank and an electric heater, just resistive loads again. <clears throat> and uh, we'll turn it on and see what happens. Apparently I have some lights on already. Turn those off quick. Alright, so it is on, but there is no display readout. And I know that was working before. I suspect that uh, I unplugged that by accident, unfortunately, when I was reassembling it. So I'll have to see about that. Um, we'll ignore that for now. <clears throat> it's pretty irrelevant anyway. The uh, inverter is drawing. Point eight amps. <clears throat> I'll put this on oscilloscope. There's the output waveform. It's a modified sine wave as you'd expect. I'm going to set this to uh, watts and turn on a 40 watt light bulb. 40 watts. That still looks fine. And we're drawing 5 amps, so that's good. Now I'm not going to make an efficiency curve here of this inverter. I just want to know if it's uh, inverting properly or not. So I'm going to gradually increase the load, turn on more and more lights, and uh, finally this heater, to uh, make sure that the amperage is increasing at about the right rate. Um, if there's any point where it starts increasing faster, 
then I know that there's a problem. There should be about uh, 10 amps per 100 watts uh, is typical for an inverter. So I'm just going to keep turning these on and uh, see what it does. 100 watt light bulb, another 100, another 100, another 100, another 100. Now these lights are making a uh, humming noise, which means the waveform isn't very clean. Most modified sign inverters don't do that to me. This one does. So we have 800 watts out and 80 amps in. And that is pretty typical of a modified sign inverter. I don't know if you can hear the humming of the lights, but uh, the output is obviously not... Um, not uniform, they're kind of surging, the hum is. Now that has nothing to do with my repairs, it's just the way it's designed. Uh, you can kind of see in the waveform a little hitch every once in a while in it. That's probably the singing noise that we're hearing. Actually, I don't know if you can see that with all this light. It's just too bright. There we go. I'll hold it over here. So that's not very impressive, but uh, in terms of the inverter, it's not getting very warm, at least on the outside. <clears throat> so that must mean that the uh, transistors on top that are replaced are working all right. Internally, it could be getting quite warm, I don't know, since I have it closed. The fans are not running. They must be either temperature or load controlled, or both. We'll check that here. I'm going to turn on this 600-watt uh, heater. Thirteen hundred watts, one hundred and thirty-six amps. <clears throat> so it all appears to be working all right, but you can see the waveform here is absolutely awful. It's basically a square wave. So this inverter is having a lot of trouble powering this load. It's rated for sixteen hundred watts. It can't even do thirteen hundred properly. Um, let me grab a glove so I can turn off some of these lights one at a time. Oh, and here we go. The fans just kicked on. It'd be interesting to see what the uh, display readout gives you. I'll have to fix that. Like I said, I know it was working at one point, and now it's not, so... Something probably just came unplugged. But, uh, see if I can do this without burning myself. There, I turned off three of the lights. And uh, now you can see that the waveform is kind of coming back, but uh, not really. The voltage, at least, is steady. So, the voltage doesn't sag, it's just the waveform that suffers when it gets overloaded. I continue to turn out the lights, and you can see that uh, the waveform slowly gets better. And now it's more of a proper modified sign. <clears throat> so I'm going to turn this heater on high, which should be 1500 watts, see what it does. It's only 1300. Call this a uh, 1600 watt inverter is pretty generous. I would not call it that. It's probably more like a 1200 watt inverter. I'm not impressed with this thing. There's 1600 watts, 180 amps in, so it's getting pretty inefficient. The voltage is sagging significantly now. Um, I'm not going to test the surge rate. Oh, and also the waveform is extremely noisy. Um, all in all, this is a very poor quality inverter. I don't like it at all, but uh, it is repaired. So it's now working like it should. And I'll probably make another video segment a little bit later on uh, actually testing this to see how it functions. But uh, for now, that's going to be it. A Whistler 1600 watt power inverter. It has been repaired.
and it now works properly, all except for this readout, which I'm pretty sure just needs to be plugged in again. So there you go. Thanks for watching.